Hello there, welcome back to 0260 Motoring once again. My name is Bill Sio Tuori and today I'm going to tell you more about the 2016 Toyota Pote. But before I do that, remember 0260 Motoring is a tried and tested platform that makes your car ownership journey easy. Basically, we scout for clean cars, we inspect them and make your car ownership journey easy. So if you want to purchase a car, shoot us a message or ring us on the number below and we're going to make your car ownership journey easy. You can also find some of our video articles, or some of our articles, blogs and vlogs on our website. That is a 0 to 60 motoring. All right, 3, 2, 1, 2016 Toyota Pote review. So what exactly is the Toyota Pote? When you're looking at this car, it's more of a mini, mini van or a mini, let me say, family vehicle. Because when you're looking at this car, it is, it looks somewhat like uh, something uh, slightly smaller than a uh, Toyota Vox or no. And then uh, the boxy design of this car shows you that uh, it should be practical or accommodative at least for the family. And then when you're looking at a uh, 1.1 million shillings, there are not many cars in that price range that can actually give you the practicality of the Toyota Pote. Now let's look at the design of this car from uh, from the uh, from the outside, uh, the design perspective. There's not much to talk about this car matters uh, the body or uh, how it looks uh, from the front. The wheels here are actually these are uh, 15 inch uh, wheels. You have side mirror winkers, and then you have two doors on this side. Of course, for the for the other side, the left side, you have a sliding door, which makes actually getting into this car an easy task. So when you're looking at this car, it's not uh, the most beautiful car you can buy at 1.1 million shillings, but uh, the, this uh, boxy shape is meant to improve the cars uh, practically. That doesn't matter uh, the space. That's why you can see that uh, it's, uh, it, has, uh, it, has, it is as tall as uh, maybe some of the crossovers you'll be finding out there. So speaking of the practicality element, let's see what this car has in terms of the interior spacing. So getting into the Toyota Pote is a very simple task because this door is, uh, let me say, somewhat wide. So you will not be having any problem getting into this car. This is how this car looks like uh, in terms of the cabin accommodation. You can tell that uh, the amount of uh, knee room in this car is actually it's not that bad. For uh, an average person or a tall person, you will not be having any problem. What I really like about this car is the headroom because this headroom is better than what you'll be finding in something like the S-Class. Because this car doesn't have a gear lever down here or a handbrake, you can actually move to the co-driver's position easily because this is a family car. So this is how the co-driver seat looks like in terms of the accommodation. It's also pretty accommodative and you can actually slide it backward to some level. So the main, the main people will be purchasing this car, of course I'll be talking about that in the end. This, this is a very good car for the elderly people who want uh, some good knee room or uh, those people who are enabled differently because uh, getting into this car you normally use this uh, you normally use this uh, sliding door let me open it that way yeah that is the sliding so when uh, you are looking at uh, this uh, amount of space it's easy for someone maybe who has a uh, who is enabled differently or someone elderly to get into this car and then once they get into this car you can see that uh, the amount of knee room is going to be pretty accommodative for them yeah the only problem i have uh, with uh, this car in terms of uh, getting into this car it's uh, this uh, sliding door sometimes it can actually be moody it can actually be problematic but uh, when it's working pretty fine you won't be having problems getting into this car another thing is that uh, if uh, there are people who want to get into these area seats of course you have to bring uh, this uh, seat to the front and then you have, you have actually to flick it down this way and then that is how you're going to access the rear seats this is the second row of these are toyota pote you can actually see there is a practical car of course uh, the headroom is of course uh, good the knee room is also good it also depends on the person who is occupying this front seat how they have adjusted they have adjusted their seats so when uh, someone has already occupied this seat the only way you can get into this uh, back here is uh, using uh, the other side that is something I really don't like about this car, but it's not a big deal. Another thing I don't like about this car is that uh, on this side, you actually have only one big window, this one. So sometimes if uh, the person uh, who is occupying this front seat doesn't want to adjust the window, sometimes the ventilation can become a problem. So 
so this is how the Toyota Pote looks in terms of our trunk space. Of course, we have very many water bottles here. I'm shooting this video from Mombasa, where by the temperature is crazy hot. So we normally drain these. Uh, we normally drain water at a very high rate. So we have to have uh, a lot of water bottles, of course, for hydration purposes. So when you're looking at the boot space of this car, of course, it's not as uh, big or cavernous, but at least this boot can actually fit like a two full-size uh, briefcases and that is what actually makes uh, this, this car kind of practical now when you're looking uh, down uh, this uh, lever here down this liner here of course uh, the space here cannot full, fit a full-size spare wheel but at least it can actually fit a uh, other or something like uh, maybe a jack something like a pump so that is how the this car fares on in terms of the boot space so when you're looking at this uh, toyota pote there is something actual that uh, should come into your mind these are uh, let me say a family car but it's a slightly smaller so this car is targeting someone who has maybe started a family and they are having kids because for this car inside the car kids can actually stand in the car and uh, don't uh, have a problem some someone can move from the front seat to the rear one without a big problem so the biggest talking point of this Toyota Pote is space or practicality <music> So what powers the Toyota Pote? Uh, for year 2016, the Toyota Pote comes uh, with uh, two engine options. One is a 1.3 liter and the other is a 1.5 liter. What I have here is a 1.5 liter or 1500cc if you like. It's called the 2NR engine. Uh, production for this uh, 2NR engine and the, I think 1NR engine 1 1.3 liter started around 2015. So for the previous version of the Toyota Pote, they used to come with the 1NZF, that is a 1500cc. Or the 2NZ, that is the 1300cc, similar engines you're getting in something like a Toyota Probox. I know speaking of a Toyota Probox, that is a car that has been used, uh, has been tried and tested in the Kenyan market. So when uh, you are uh, realizing that, that uh, this car has been utilizing a Toyota Probox engine, that tells you that uh, it should actually be pretty reliable and uh, easy to fix or easy to run. So uh, when I'm looking at these uh, two NR engine, it's also applied in, uh, in other Toyota cars and it's a very simple engine to utilize. The reason that Toyota uh, revised the engine from 1NZF to these are two NR, of course, is to improve on fuel efficiency. Of course, I'll be coming into that one in a few moments. Now, for the Toyota Pote, uh, the one NR engine or these are two NR engine, it power is sent to the front wheels via CVT gearbox uh, in all Toyota Portes and in all Toyota Spades, because uh, the Toyota Pote and the Toyota Spade, they actually have some striking similarities. So there is no manual transmission for the Toyota Pote. So how does the Toyota Pote drive? Someone who's purchasing a Toyota Pote, driving a Dynamics may not be into their priority list, but a car review cannot be complete without uh, the driving element. So let's know how this car drives. Eh? Alright, as you can see the driving position in this uh, Toyota Pote is actually very good because it's, uh, it's, it has a, a driving position that is uh, more of a crossover like driving position because I actually have a very good visibility of the road ahead of me. Of course there is a huge uh, blind spot here but I don't think uh, that uh, it's, uh, it's a big deal. And then uh, what I've realized uh, with this Toyota Pote is that uh, because of its, uh, its uh, board design of course uh, it has zero aerodynamics. Uh, it may actually the boxy shape actually lets in a lot of road noise into there is a lot of uh, noise encroaching the cabin so the total port is not that car you'll purchase and i uh, say that uh, maybe you have the a car that ins insulates uh, road noise pretty well because uh, this car actually when uh, you try to gather speeds it actually tends to become a little bit louder that is something i've uh, that is something i really i really don't like about this uh, toyota Pote. And uh, because this car has a zero aerodynamics, you can see these are uh, boxy body. And uh, the way I'm sat in these are uh, somewhat high. When this car is actually fully loaded with the passengers, at corners you may actually notice that it actually attracts some uh, body roll, which is uh, typical with a car that has a zero aerodynamics. So that is another flaw I've realized with this car. But uh, when you're keeping it at uh, low speeds, that is uh, 80 kilometers per hour or maximum 100 the body roll may not be that pronounced so this is a car I'll, I, I, because it's a family car and the body design is uh, somewhat awkward i'll say that it's a uh, good actually maintaining low speeds <music> so
so someone who's purchasing a Toyota Porte fuel efficiency is one of the most important things they are actually looking at uh, before placing their money on a Toyota Porte and uh, with my experience with this car these are 1500 cc actually can give you 16 km kilometers per liter as long as you are driving it sensibly or uh, on the highway driving of course in traffic the figures may drop to around 14 kilometers per liter which is still a good figure if you ask me for some, some uh, car with a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated petrol engine So how does the Toyota Porte look like in terms of the cabin styling? When you are looking at this car, while it beats uh, the S-Class matters uh, the headroom, uh, the interior may not be the best uh, out there. But of course, when you're looking at the price tag of this car, I'm not expecting that uh, you, are, you want to fancy a car with, uh, let me say, good aesthetics. Because this car has hard plastics all over, but at 1.1 million shillings, I don't think that is uh, something to keep you worried of. Now, when you're looking at this cabin here, there are not many features to talk about and the one thing i really don't like about this car is the placement of these uh, cluster reading here of course this is uh they make uh i don't like uh, this placement because sometimes if i uh, maybe you want to go above the speed limit of course uh, and uh, you are having nagging passengers in this car on the back side of course they can be monitoring your speeds that is something i really don't like so the placement of these uh, cluster here is uh, somewhat awkward because you cannot be over speeding uh, because uh, the passengers in the rear side will be looking at uh, the reading here but I don't think uh, there is a normal person who wants to speed in a Toyota Porte. Uh, we don't have a gear knob down here or a handbrake because this car has a, a foot brake down here. And uh, in terms of the features, there are not many in this car apart from these uh, volume control buttons on the left side. Uh, we also have a heated seat for this uh, driver. Of course, the car is a push to start car and I think that is all you can actually tell about this car. So this is not a car you buy if you are into aesthetics because... Uh, doesn't pack many features so should you buy the Toyota Porte when I'm looking at this car the price tag at 1.1 million shillings I think it's a good value for money because not many cars will be giving you the practicality and the reliability of the Toyota Porte at 1.1 million shillings uh, from a from my standpoint I think it's a better value for money than something like a Vitz because uh, the only thing that it may not give you like a Vitz maybe is that uh, of course being a slightly bigger car it will consume slightly more fuel but uh, it uh, has that accommodative element for a family it's reliable because you're looking at the 2NR engine as uh, one of the best engines in the class matters reliability the car is spacious that is uh, for the front passengers and the rear passengers apart from the sliding door that uh, may misbehave at times I don't think there is something wrong with this car and maybe if uh, you are into aesthetics of course, it may not be the best car in the class uh, matters looks, but as someone who's, uh, who's purchasing a Toyota Porte, I don't think aesthetics is in their priority list. Basically, you're looking for a reliable car that should get you from point A to B. So from my standpoint, if you, own, you have a 1.1 million shillings and maybe you want to purchase your first car and uh, maybe you don't like uh, the compressed hatchbacks, the likes of uh, Note, Demio and uh, the Vitz, I think uh, these are Toyota Porte should get into your list or it's a twin, that is the Toyota Sped. I think that information can actually help you make an informed uh, purchase uh, process, that is if uh, you also wanted information about these are Toyota Porte. Simply a very efficient car, reliable and then uh, it's a uh, very practical, but then with the design of these uh, cabin, it's a uh, very basic, uh, the steering, the, the cluster read readings are actually on a very wide position, I don't like uh, them this way and then the looks of this car may not be there are looks that only a mother can love or other people may actually call it ugly but as someone who has 1.1 million shillings and they want a new car new car in quotes that is a 2016 one they don't have as many options to call other cars ugly like the like the nissan duke this car has uh, let me say some hidden beauty of course many people will be struggling to to see its beauty but uh, i'm not saying that it's one of the most beautiful cars out there but uh, when you're looking at this uh, body design it may not sit well with actually very many people. Uh, of course, I don't think that one is going to be a big uh, talking point, but it's good learning that. I think that is one of the most, uh, that's one of the reasons that uh, many people are not going to purchase the Toyota Porte. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now. Stay safe.